Greetings ladies and mentalgens and welcome to today's Reddit series video from the subreddit HFY called Contact Procedures Volume 5 Chapter 3 Written by Meat Vicar. The link to the original will be down below and as always, I hope that you enjoy. Blail was bored. She would be out there with Wep right now if it weren't for those blasted slave drugs. Two weeks after the treatment and she still was as weak as a pup. Damn those who queer. She wanted to see Earth. She wasn't going to trap Wep in here with her, though, and she needed the bit of solitude to explore the room to its fullest. Whenever the two of them had tried, they kept getting distracted. Her all communal quarters would give fit into the apartment twice over. Most of the apartment was dominated by an open sitting area, a third of which was dominated by a massive window screen. The rest was lined with couches and tables, broken only by a handful of nook nooks that hid everything from small bedrooms to sealed weapons lockers to exercise equipment to a well-stocked kitchen. Lael had never cooked, though, and wouldn't know the first thing about preparing a meal. Slaves had always had managed that. Those are queer sure kept us nice and focused, thought Lael bitterly. Wonder what those humans have planned for us instead. She swept the room with recording devices, trying to be as thorough as she could. It wasn't a very good sweep, judging from the sheer technological sophistication on display. The humans could hide a recording device just about anywhere. It had taken Leo the better part of an hour, and even the figure out how to screen worked. The microcircuitry was all but indistinguishable from the surrounding crystal. They weren't just made out of gravel grass, either. The glass would have shattered if they had hurled one of the small screens against the wall. Not that the gadgetry was disguised as elegantly. The food storage containers clearly used galactic stasis tech. Although, Leo couldn't remember seeing the small bubble projectors outside of medic bags or the grav fuel generators next to the free weights that could have been picked up straight off the compact ship. Anything of terror origin had been blended seamlessly, though. So, any human designs are likely to be invisible, Lael said, speaking aloud to an empty room. Wonderful. I guess it'd be too much to ask for some to bug the place for a galactic tech. She scooped up the fallen screen and collapsed back onto the couch with a sigh. Maybe she could still find something useful from the human net. It took a few minutes to key the device to her personal use, and then she jumped online and started to skim through the chaos of the Terran information network. Whatever these humans were, they weren't repressive. It looked like they'd thrown every scrap of their collective knowledge into the net, then somehow found a way to keep it all organized. Leo had no trouble ferreting out an open-source bug snooper and renting time on the tower's fabric to produce it. Your move, humans. The delivery estimate told her that she had about an hour's wait before her new toy arrived. May as well spend it on the net. Lael tracked down the schematic of her apartment and was surprised to find that it had a balcony. Part of the window slid open and a short transparent platform took on a solid colors when she waved her hand over the appropriate panel. There was even a few pieces of collapsible furniture tucked into the cubby of the wall. She relocated outside if Whip got to walk around at least she could do was enjoy the sun. She returned to her room exploration as the net until she stumbled onto a learned program forum. One of the tutorials promised to produce a simple game, so she completed that. Finding a more artsy community to try and get some original sprites made wasn't overly difficult either, but it did link her into some sort of Nectra discussion board. At first she was excited, thinking that she'd found the gathering place for excited Nectras, but she'd soon realized that the posters were all the adolescent humans. They'd taken to sharing photos, texts, and drawings. Most of the links and diatribes were horribly inaccurate. She'd be damned if she let them get away with so many things wrong. Leo was in the middle of a heated debate over, amongst other things, Nectra anatomy and the mating practices when her door chimed. She jumped up thinking that it might be Wep, but quickly remembered that he could have just walked in. She took her time answering the door. A sheepish-looking human female stood outside, pushing a small cart. One of the cart's two boxes was clearly her fab order, while the other bore the Terran Navy insignia. I wasn't aware that they were delivered by hand, said Nail. They aren't, replied the woman, but this is a bit of a special case. Besides, your snooper would miss some of our newer bugs. Nail waved the human in after a brief moment of hesitation. The woman started snapping open the military transport case, speaking as she did so. 
We've got the basic tap on your net traffic, nothing fancy, just a scrapper for anything public, and spotted your grabber order. Figured we'd help. She flipped open a case to reveal a small black scanner. This thing will pick up everything the R&Ds managed to put out except for the damn closed circuit sleepers. Then you're not bugging us? The human shook her head. No, we're not. Definitely thought about it, but we figured it'd send the wrong message. Room should be clean. Leo swept the room before returning the scanner, but she still didn't know why she bothered. Humans could have sent both snoopers to only false negatives as she would never know. The Nectra returned to the deck and started digging through the primer on the low-level programming logic. Maybe she should go through the Faber scanner circuit by circuit and check for tempering. How hard could it be? They all soon dozed off under the afternoon sun and didn't wake until Welp prodded her with the shoulder. Then she bolted upright with a mix of embarrassment and excitement. Her mate was standing on the deck, ears flared in amusement. Whip had hunted down a set of dining furniture and piled it up with delicious smelling Chinese food that she was asking him to bring. He spoke before she could say anything. My guy didn't seem too happy when we heard that we were eating nothing but Russian packs in here. Called up some squad mates of his to cook up, up something fresh. Webb gestured back inside to where three carts overflowed with food stasis boxes. Kicked off something of a chain reaction. Leo let out a delightful growl, all thoughts of intrigue and spying forgotten. Plenty of time for worry later. Right now her pup was back, and everything was perfect. End of chapter. Chapter 4 Galactic Compact Medical Care didn't include things like post-battle nectarine rehabilitation. In its scope or practice, for that matter, it didn't really concern itself with the rehabilitation at all. You were either wealthy enough to recover privately, healthy enough to work, or dead. It's what you get when you two are the most influential races evolved from solitary predators. The Aqua and the Alpia weren't fond of cripples. Whip and Lael hadn't been affected by the lack of compact-funded rehabilitation programs. They were on Earth. Instead, they'd fallen victim to a peculiar blind spot. Neither of them had ever heard of a, um, wheelchair before. Lael hadn't been too keen on getting, as she put it, dragged around like some spineless squib. But Whip had worn her down, and now the two of them were finally exploring the city together. She seemed impressed by the sprawling parks and gardens. They managed all of this without slaves. Yep, although most gardeners do their other things in ten flowers. Humans seem to delight in learning as many different careers as possible. Wouldn't that hurt their soldiering? Not from what we've seen. Leo let out a nervous growl. Neither of them ever wanted to face a human marine again. A column of uniformed humans were marching along one of the pathways, moving with machine-like precision. They all turned to watch them pass, while Webb took the opportunity to watch Leo. Her fur was starting to take on its former luster, and her wasted frame was filling out. She'd be back and fighting Trim within weeks. Well, within weeks if she didn't push herself too hard. Webb wasn't sure that he could keep her from charging ahead. His best bet was to keep her distracted with the city. Good thing Vancouver was big. Webb brought Leon to one of the park's secluded grills and started unfolding a metal cooker. She observed a obvious skepticism. Since when do you cook? My guy showed me yesterday. I've been itching to try it ever since. No, what you're doing? Think so. It's not that hard. Webb didn't mention the dozens of articles and videos he'd skimmed through after Lael had fallen asleep. She'd just have to worry that he was just tired. Webb seasoned and cooked the meat without much trouble and watched Lael dig into the juicy steak more than made up for the lost sleep. Where to next? asked Lael. She eyed the piece of unfinished meat on Webb's plate hungrily. We wait here. Some professors from the local university offered to meet us here for an informal chat. Webb's ears twitched in a movement as Leo reached over and snagged his remaining steak. Their guests arrived shortly afterwards. Leo immediately cloistered herself away from the computing and electrical engineering lecturers, starting a rapid back and forth where Webb couldn't follow. He chatted with a handful of biologists and physicists instead. As they left, one of the progress slipped a small black pouch into Leo's hands. Webb gave her a questioning glance. What's that? Bug sniffer. It's a long story. Any further questioning was cut off by the repasser by his interruption. Excuse me, but have you ever met one of the Aquia? Webb saw no reason not to respond. Think one of them presided over the station-wide ceremony back in the Pride. But other than that, no, they keep to themselves. 
shame. They're really quite fascinating, you know. Interesting social structure, unique creatures. The man peered a whip. Of course, you'd know more about that than I would. Can't say that I do. Now if you'd... But how could you not? They're marvels. Not many aquatic creatures can break out into space. But the aquated started off weaving the little nets, ended up with the head of a galactic web. Brutally disciplined, too. The question here blocked Webb's path when the nectar tried to step around him. Yeah, I've never known a squib to break the ranks. I really should. Yes, yes, that's the way to put it. Absolute loyalty to whichever senior budded over them. Only mate when they have got the territory, too. So the young ones are always pushing to expand. Made spaceflight almost inevitable. Of course, that's all tangential. I am more interested in the evidence of the systematic repression of certain technological advances. Whip physically moved the short human off to the side. Fascinating, I'm sure, but we really have to go. We're already running late. The two Nectra all but ran to the transit tunnel. Once inside, Webb sagged down into his seat with relief. Thought he'd talk all day. It was a short ride to the arena. Al was waiting for them at the platform with two thick Nectra-sized jackets. You're cutting it a bit close. The puck drops in fifteen. Put these on and follow me. Lael glanced over at Webb as she slipped into a jacket. Puck, all I know is that we're watching a hockey game. Al suggested it. Their guide led them through the arena and the side entrance, dodging the massive crowd pressing in through the main door. They made it to their booth just before the game started. Leo stared down at the ice as the game began. How are the players moving around on that? It looks like a big frozen lake. Webb had tracked down an article on the sport. Looks like they strap blades to their feet. Let's them move around with slipping. Weird. Which team do we want to win? The ones with white are the home team, says here that they're a four-game winning streak right now. A crunch echoed through the massive arena, and Lael yelled at a yelp of surprise. Webb glanced up. What? One of the players just got slammed into the board. Sounded like a ship rammed him. What kind of armor are these guys wearing? Webb glanced back down. No armor, just some lightweight foam padding. They've played this way for centuries. That would have killed either of us. These humans are insane. Both Nectra winced as another loud crash rang out. Webb expected the skater to crumple back to the ice, but he didn't even stumble. He just kept racing after the small black puck. Webb wasn't sure what he was thought of the sport, but Leia loved it. She was joining the crowd when they cheered and booed by the end of the first period. The home team lost in overtime. Leo was furious as they left the building. We should have had that damn refs were blind. How would you know? You hadn't even heard of hockey this morning. Leo waved a small screen, found a news group. They weren't happy for some of those calls. Well, glad you enjoyed it. Next stop's going just as fun. As the sun was still high by the time they made it to the beach, the tide was just coming in. Leo was speechless. How is something like this even possible? Webb shrugged. The moon, I think. Sure is nice. I'll say, Leo rose up out of the chair and plopped down into the warm sand. This is way better than the station. Webb settled down next to her and the two Nectra barely moved until the ocean was lapping at their feet. It took them six days to grow tired of the city. They visited art galleries, museums, and libraries. They marveled at animals and sea creatures held in the city's aquarium and zoo. And they watched another two hockey games, Leo insisted. But after six days of leisure, both Webb and Leo grew restless. On the seventh day, they rejoined the fight. End of chapter I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel or the author, all the stuff is down below. And as always, I hope that you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next story. Cheers.